there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off The Beaded Path and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, April the 15th, 2019. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. Today, we are going to start a brand new series of videos on wrap bracelets. They have been really popular for the last couple of years and it seems like they're not going to go away. Everybody's coming up with new versions of these bracelets and new ways to do them and all that kind of stuff. So, with the summer months approaching, I thought it would be really good to kind of go over the basics of a wrap bracelet. So today, I want to show you the one needle figure eight design that a lot of people like to use. Next week, I'm going to show you a two needle design. And then the following week, I would love to show you a special design with the wrap bracelet. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it will work out. One, what we're going to be using today for this specific video is I'm going to be using two yards of a 1.5 millimeter leather. Now you can use real leather, you can use um, faux leather, um, you know, anything like that, but it, I'm just using the 1.5 millimeter and I'm using two yards. Also, I'm going to be using four millimeter fire polish beads. I'm going to do a three wrap bracelet. I wear a seven inch bracelet, so I'm going to be using about 140 four millimeter fire polish beads. You're going to need a button um, to finish off your, your piece. You are going to need a needle. I'm going to be using a size 10 beading needle. I'm going to use fire line to actually stitch my beads onto the leather. Now you can use pretty much any type of cord. I've had people use embroidery thread, uh, people use 1G, uh, Sinu, you know, just any type of thread that you wanted to use. Even the super fine S long cord would work. It's completely up to you, but for what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using some smoke six pound fire line. I'm going to need six size 11 seed beads. The only place you're going to see this is at the very beginning and the very end of the bracelet. Otherwise, I would suggest a really good pair of scissors as well as possibly some fun beads that have large holes to go on the end of your leather. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things that I have found that works out really great for the wrap bracelets is the natural leather. With the natural leather, when you put a knot in the leather, that knot stays with no problem whatsoever. If you use synthetic or faux leather, or even the vegan leather, what happens is the knot doesn't tend to hold as well. So you may need some E6000 glue to put actually on the knot that you are going to make after your button. Another thing you want to think about when making the wrap bracelet is how you want to hold the work as you do the wrap itself. For me personally, I'm going to be using the Beadalon tying station. This is just a tool that I have found that I really, really like to use when making these. Um, number one, it tells you your length really well and you're able to move this piece and I'll show you kind of how I set this up when we start the video. Um, you can also use a clipboard and some people use neither they just do it freehand. It's completely up to you and how you want to do it but I will show you how I set up the bead and lawn tying station um, just because it's what I use and I really like it and I had a wrap bracelet class a few weeks ago here at my store and I had out of 12 people in the class eight people bought one of these and they really really like them for this particular project. Um, otherwise I think that's about all that we're going to need so let's go ahead and let's get started with the project. Okay, so here are what I want to show you how to make today. Um, this one is just a really simple, you can see wrap bracelet. This one is three wraps um, using four millimeter fire polish beads. Here is another version I have done. Um, and you can see again, it's just three wraps with a button and fire polish beads. 
I also have on another example here using really pretty mauves and lavender colors. And the one I'm gonna be doing for you today is gonna be blues and silvers. So um, the blue here on the end is the lapis blue. The one here in the middle is this one. Then this one here. And finally, the silver is this color. So now you know all four colors that I'm gonna be using in the sample today. And I'm gonna be using black 1.5 millimeter leather. I have my needle threaded with three yards of fire line. So you can decide, um, work with only as much fire line as you feel comfortable with. Don't try to use a whole bunch of fire line because it's gonna end up being a big naughty mess. So just work with what you feel comfortable with. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my leather and fold it in half. So with the looped end here, I'm gonna make a knot. When you make the knot, you wanna make sure that your button will fit inside the loop. So if you have your button, you can test out the loop size here and you can kind of play with it to move the loop to be the size that you want or need. But we wanna make that loop. Now, some people go ahead and put the um, button on first and you can definitely do that. Um, maybe next week I will show you that one. But today I'm gonna to start with the loop. So I told you I was gonna be using my Beadalon tying station. So I wanna show you kind of how the tying station works um, basically, it is acrylic, and it looks like this. Um, it comes completely apart. Like, if I wanted to, I could take the whole thing completely apart, but I don't want to do that. You can see here that these pieces actually have um, uh, indentions in them to where when you put it back in there, it holds it in place. Um, this side will move so that you can move it if you need to make something shorter or maybe a little bit longer. So what I actually will do is I'm going to start out with my leather piece here and I'm going to start out with the loop and the loop is going to go over the screw that's here on this end. So when you actually use this piece, it comes with this piece, which has foam in it, and it comes with a flat piece like this. This piece works out really great as you move your bracelet um, because it allows you to be able to hold the beadwork without um, damaging any of your beads. So I just kind of use this one all the time. So I'm gonna push it down on there and it's got the little wing nut here and I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down in place. Doesn't have to be super tight because it's just holding the loop. Now on this side, I'm gonna make sure that I have my two pieces here. I'm going to actually put them in between. Let me lift it up a little bit more here and slide this all the way back. Okay. I'm going to pull it tightly and I'm going to screw this wing nut in here. And you want it kind of tight. If you see that these are loose, we want to go ahead and loosen this up a little bit, pull it a little tighter, and then tighten it back up. All right, so now that it's set up, we're ready to actually start. So I have two pieces of leather here. I have a bottom piece that's closest to me and I have a top piece. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna bring it under this top piece of leather. And I'm gonna pull the thread until I've got just a little short tail here. Now, again, this is, a, this is how I like to do it. This doesn't mean that everybody does it this way. So please keep that in mind. But I'm going to put a couple of knots here and I'm gonna slide it all the way up to the top. And then I'm gonna put some more knots. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this little tail thread and I'm gonna put it here under my piece of foam so that way I don't have to worry about that foam getting in my way. So the first thing that I'm gonna do 
is right now my thread is coming and attached to this top piece of leather. So I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna do some figure eights to start with. So I'm gonna come under this bottom thread here. And I'm gonna pull this on through. And when I pull it through, I wanna make sure that the thread goes all the way here up against the knot, okay? Then I'm gonna go over the bottom, under the top. So over the bottom, under the top. Let me see if I can zoom in here just a little bit more. There we go. So over the bottom, under the top, and pull. And again, make sure those stitches go all the way up. Okay, over the top, under the bottom. Your mantra is over, under, over, under, over, under. And I like to put a few stitches in here before I start just so I can get into the hang of my mantra over under. Plus, this does really, really well for holding that thread in place. All right, so I've got my over under, over under, and now I'm gonna be using some size 11 seed beads. For the 11s that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using a completely different color so it's really easy for you guys to see. Um, of course, you'll want to use a color that matches what you're doing. So I pick up my bead, I'm going over the bottom, under the top. And I'm gonna put my finger here so that the size 11 seed bead can't pop out to the other side. Okay, and right now you can see it's just kind of laying here on top and it's gonna do that until we put it in place. So I'm going over the top leather, through the bead, and then, oh, let me grab it up here. And if you have to pull it up a little bit, like I just did, that's okay. And then I'm going under the bottom. So again, I'm going over the top, through the bead, under the bottom. Okay, and I'm gonna pull this thread now. And when you pull it, <clears throat> that bead will pop right into place. Now we wanna try to slide that bead up as high as we can get it. There we go. All right, so there's my single bead. Now I'm gonna pick up two 11s over the bottom, under the top. Hold my finger there so those 11s can't pop out on the other side. And I'm gonna go over the top through those two 11s again, and these two little 11s are tricky to get into. So I'm gonna go through the two 11s and then under the bottom. So over the top, through the two 11s, under the bottom. And again, we're gonna pull it tight and make sure they go all the way up there against the single bead. Now I'm gonna start with my fire polish beads. So I'm gonna pick up a fire polish over the top, I mean over the bottom, under the top. So it's over, under, over, under. That's your mantra for the whole thing. I'm going over the top, through the bead, under the bottom. So over, through the bead, under. Okay, and when I pull the thread, I'm pulling straight out the way that it's coming out of the bead. Okay, now I'm gonna pick up my next bead over the bottom, under the top, so over, under. And again, I'm gonna put my finger here. Okay, I'm going to go over the top, through the bead, and under the bottom. So over the top, through the bead, under the bottom. And pull. And I pulled it straight out. Okay. Next color is going to be over the bottom, under the top. So over, under. 
pull it through over the top through the bead under the bottom over the top through the bead under the bottom And again, I'm pulling it straight out so that those beads will sit straight up and down exactly like I want them to. I'm gonna show you one more time. I'm going to pick up my bead. I'm going over the bottom, under the top. Then I'm going over the top, through the bead, under the bottom. Over the top, through the bead, under the bottom. So you'll want to continue adding your beads until you reach either the length of your bracelet or you run out of thread. So I'm going to continue doing exactly like I've just showed you until I run out of thread so that I can show you how I personally add and finish off threads for this project. So I wanted to show you, I've come all the way to the end here of my little, um, tool and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wing nut off of this end of the tool itself and then all I'm going to do here is I'm going to loosen this just a little. So I'm going to take this piece well come on here there we go okay I'm going to take the leather itself and I'm going to move it all the way up here I'm going to take my foam piece, slide it back down, and put the wing nut back on. And then I'm going to set this, pull it nice and firm, tighten it back up, and I'm going to continue to do my stitching. So one thing that I did, oh, there we go, kind of want to... Um, show you because as I was working I noticed this and let me zoom in here hang out with me for just a second there we go okay so one thing that I did want to kind of show you um, a little tip that I do is when I come up over under and then I go over through the bead under when I keep my finger here and just kind of hold the thread as I pull it down. So sometimes this can get a little bit loose right here and all you have to do is pull that thread straight out the way that it's coming out of the bead and it will tighten any thread, little loose thread that you might have up. It'll tighten that up for you so that you don't have to worry about it. Now the biggest thing is you don't want these beads so tight against each other that it's going to ripple. And I'll show you, I actually made this one. This is using um, rondelles, little 2 by 3 rondelles. And you can see here where it ripples a little bit, like where the beads don't stay completely flat. And that's because these specific ones, I got them too tight next to each other. This was the first one I had done with some of these rondelles. And so you just wanna make sure to give them enough room. And see like, especially that one right there, that one's a hot mess. But you wanna give them enough room to where they will lay nice and straight like some of these are here. So just be aware that you don't want these so close and so tight together that it's gonna ripple. So just make sure that when you look at it from the side that you're seeing, you know, like right there's a spot, but otherwise you're giving them enough room to lay flat next to each other. All right, so I've reached the point where I don't have a whole lot of thread left. So some people tie the ends of their thread together and they keep going. I personally don't like to do that. So what I do is I've added my bead here and I'm going to do um, basically the same technique as I've been doing. I'm going to go over the bottom, through the bead, under the top. So I'm going to basically go through it again and I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going through the bead so that way it will um, kind of hold it in place for me. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go under the thread here between the leather and the fire polish bead and I'm going to put a half hitch knot. 
So I'm gonna leave just a little loop, stick the needle through the loop, and pull. And then I wanna put one at the top as well. So I'm gonna go under the thread here, leave a loop, pull through the loop. And now I never cut at the knot, so I'm going to go through the bead and by this time it's getting really tight and hard to get through. So I'm going through and then I'm gonna take cutters and I'm gonna trim this thread. And I may have, oh, there we go. As I say, I may have to get some other cutters. Okay, so now I'm going to thread my needle with another thing of fire line. This one's only gonna be about a yard. People always ask me, how do you thread your needle? I lay it between my fingers and I lay the needle down over the thread, just like that, so that the thread has nowhere to go but through the needle. Now, I'm going to pick up the next bead in my little section here. I'm gonna go over, under, just like I normally would, and I'm gonna hold the little bead in place here and I'm gonna pull it and leave myself just a little bit of a tail. Now, I'm going to take the needle, I'm gonna go over the top, through the bead, and under the bottom. Again, holding on to that tail thread there. Now, I'm gonna pull it to where it's right here, next to my other bead, and I'm gonna tie these two threads together because at this point I have one thread over the top of the leather and one thread on the bottom of the leather. So I'm gonna take and tie it. Okay. Now before I do anything else, I'm gonna go through the bead again, going over, under, And I'm gonna do this one more time, over, under. Now, I'm just gonna keep stitching and adding my beads. If you want to, you can take a needle and you can thread this through and trim it on the other side. It's completely up to you. But at this point, I have just a few beads left to add and I'll have the length that I need for the brace, or yeah, the bracelet. Okay, so I've reached the end of my bracelet where I want my beads to be. And just like we did in the very beginning here, where we have the one seed bead and the two seed beads, we have to do that again, but we're gonna do it backwards. So I'm gonna pick up two 11s this time. I'm gonna come over under, just like I normally would, hold these beads into place, and I'm gonna go over through the beads and under. And when you do it, you wanna make sure to pull tight. Now we're gonna do the single 11 0 So one 11, go under, over, under, and then over, through the bead, under. Now with this one, you really have to pull tight because this is gonna pull it together. So I'm gonna do over, under, or sorry, over, through the bead, and under. Over, through the bead, and under. And I'm gonna take, just like I ended my thread earlier, I'm gonna go under the thread there between the 11 and, and the leather, leave just a little loop, stick my needle through the loop, and pull. Then I'm gonna get to the other side I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. And then I'm just gonna go through this bead a couple of more times. And then I'm going to get rid of this thread and I'm gonna take it off of my tying station. All right, so now that I've got my thread trimmed, I'm gonna take these two pieces of leather and I'm gonna make a knot. And I'm gonna make sure the knot goes down here next to the size 11 seed bead. 
and you want to pull it tight. Now, if your button shank is big enough to go through both pieces of cording, do that. Otherwise, I run it through one piece of cording and then I'm going to make a knot here as well. Now the thing about it is, if you try on the bracelet and it's a little bit too snug, you always have the option of making your knot further out here. So it adds a little bit of length to your bracelet. <clears throat> Let me see, I've got one, if I can find it. Okay, so this one with the rondelles, I actually didn't make it, I needed to be just a tad bit bigger so you can see I've just made my knot a little bit further out so that way it makes it to a size that is really good for me. Um, let's look in here to see. I was going to show you another sample but I don't think I've done another one like that. So at this point I'm going to take, I'm going to put another knot in depending upon you know where you want it. Now this leather that I'm using here is the faux leather so I want to put a little bit of glue on the knot itself before I actually trim off these threads because I don't want to cut it and then this knot come apart so like I said I've not really had the problem on the natural leather so much as you know with the synthetic leather so this is the blue sample that I did today in the video with the blues and the blacks. This is the copper iris and on this one actually what I did was I did not glue the ends and my knot started to come out so I put a leather crimp on the end here so to hold it together. So that's just a little lesson learned on that one. This one was with the natural leather and you can see here like I showed you is where I had to take um, and add some more um, length to the bracelet. This one is my favorite. It reminds me of uh, Tutti Frutti or the Caribbean or summer just in general. Um, and then um, you've seen this one here with the um, mauves and metallics and this one I actually had um, some large hole beads so I put those on the end. Now I did want to show you two if I can find them here. Okay so this is a pattern that Starman came out with. Um, it's called the Lissy bracelet and I'm sure you can find it on um, the Check Beads website. Um, but this is one of their bracelets and we actually did this in a class in our store a few weeks ago and you can see it's done exactly the same way as what I showed you today but it's using three hole beams, nib bits, two hole cabs so it uses different beads um, but it's the same exact technique as what I showed you today. On this one, I had some bigger hole beads. They're called roller beads. So I put those on the end and then made my little knots here. Um, this one. This one, I actually did knot here at the bottom. I just came out and made a knot at the end. So you see you have lots of different options for endings. I think I did the same thing here. Um, so, you know, you've just got lots of different options. Now, I do want to show you one that I'm working on right now. I'm wearing a shirt today, and I'll kind of pull it up here so that you can see it. It's got golds and coppers and silvers and like a, um, a mallard green color. So, I started working on another bracelet actually for myself, and I'm going to see if I can get it up here. There we go. Come on. There we go. And I'm actually using the deep green 1G. So you, I want it to actually be seen. I want it to be part of the design. And it is. And I'm loving how this is turning out. So as you can see, you have lots of different options um, when you're making this basic wrap bracelet. 
So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the basic wrap bracelet with the single needle technique. Now, like I said earlier in the video, this is just my way of doing the project. If you've seen them done differently and you don't want to do it my way, that's completely fine. Whatever floats your boat. This is just the way I personally like to make these wrap bracelets. I would love for you to come back next week to make a wrap bracelet again, but using a two needle technique. Um, like. I don't love the technique, but now I have a friend, Carrie, who can't do it with the figure eight. She has to do it with two needles. So I'll let you be the judge to see which one you will personally like better. Now, I did want to let you know that we do have kits available for some of the color samples that I showed you today in the video, as well as a written step-by-step -step pattern. And all of that can be found on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Now, the Lissy bracelet, we actually made kits for that for our class, and I do have a couple of color samples of that kit left over. Um, when you buy the kit, AKA just the materials, you get the pattern for free with that project. And you can find that under our bracelet step-by-step -step kits. Um, it's under the bracelets, and again, that's the Lissy, L-I-S-S-Y wrap bracelet. Um, we did it in a class a few weeks ago, like I said, and everybody really, really enjoyed working with the two hole, two hole and three hole beads. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.